Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's video guide is going to be all about plant feeds. Which ones to choose, what works for what plants and how to get your head around the different types of plant feed to make sure that your garden is looking amazing all year round. So grab yourself a pen and paper and let's talk about plant feed. If you've not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit the red button to subscribe today. Also click the bell for notifications. We'll have access to hundreds of garden design, hints, tips and hacks from me, the Garden Ninja. And best of all, it's free. So if you've been to a garden centre anytime recently, you'll have seen loads of different plant feeds, whether that's organic, man-made, foliar feed, you've got slow release, pellets, and all sorts of permutations in between. This guide is going to take you through the main types of plant feed so you can make an informed choice as to what you use in your gardens. So come on, let's get cracking. The first group of plant feeds are the organics and in my opinion they're the best. Now these range from anything from compost, well rotted manure, blood fish and bone. Now the beauty of organic plant feeds is for the most part you can make them at home by recycling your cut back herbaceous perennials, grass clippings or leaves. The second beauty of organic feeds is that they really help soil structure. Organic feeds such as peat-free compost mulches or leaf mould or well rotten manure get worked down into the soil by bacteria, insects and all sorts of creepy crawlies. And by doing that they open up the soil structure making sure that your soil is in tip-top condition. Compared to liquid feeds and man-made feeds they do the best all round in the garden helping soil, plants and also closing the loop on the garden and making sure that we can recycle as much as possible. So my preference would always be an organic feed, but let's have a look at some of the other methods. Now the next group of feed are the synthetic or man-made plant feeds. Usually these are made in a lab and produced en masse and they can be really specific with the different nutrients that they contain such as the NPK rating and if you don't know what that is make sure you check out my video on NPK but it refers to nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, three macronutrients that all plants need to grow. The beauty of my made feeds is that they get into the plant's root system really quickly. So if you've got a plant that's looking really sickly, then a synthetic or man-made feed can get it back on its feet far quicker. The downside is they're mass-produced. There's lots of questions about the ethics of producing, say, high nitrogen-based feeds that then leach off into water courses and almost overfeeding plants. The fact that they're producing these mass scales mean that there's a really big industry creating them. Lots of carbon, lots of waste and lots of manufacturing processes needed. So just bear that in mind whenever you're picking a man-made feed of the ethical implications of doing so. The next type of feed are the slow release feeds and the name kind of gives it away. These are plant feeds that you put down usually onto the ground that slowly break down and release those nutrients. A good example of slow release plant feed are those chicken pellets that you can buy in big tubs that are basically just compressed chicken poop that then breaks down into the soil and releases loads of high quality nutrients into the soil. You can also get synthetic slow release feeds and you'll recognise these because they come in tubs, they're usually of bright colours to kind of attract you and call you over and when you scatter them into the soil the rainfall slowly starts to break down these hard shells releasing the nutrients. Slow release are good for generalised feeding of garden plants. Now the other type of feed are the granular feeds and you tend to broadcast or spread these across the ground or containers and they are slightly slow release. Now these will feed the ground once they get wet and come into contact with moisture. They break down and then start to feed the plants. The good thing about granular feeds is they are easy to store and relatively cheap because they're mass produced. The downside of granular feeds is that you can burn plant roots. If you distribute it to the soil and it gets really hot, sometimes the feed can burn the plants. So you need to bear that in mind. Also, beginner gardeners tend to be a bit feed hungry and scatter far more than they need. 
So make sure you read the instructions and only scatter as much as you need per the surface area. So up next are liquid feeds and you'll spot these in garden centres and even supermarkets all around the world. Liquid feeds have the benefit in that they're really fast to be absorbed by plants. And you mix them usually with water and dilute them before you then apply them to the soil so that the plant can take them up. Liquid feeds are more expensive because they're bulkier to transport, heavier to make, they're in liquid form so everything's a little bit more laborious with them. But they are really good if you need to feed a plant quickly with a very specific NPK rating. Plants like orchids and houseplants usually rely on liquid feed because you're only really watering them and it's a fast way to get nutrients into plants. But bear in mind they are quite expensive and you've got to think about all those air miles and freight miles shipping them around the world. And last but not least, you've got foliar feed. And what that means is that you spray it on to the foliage. So this type of feed is usually rather weak. It's diluted and you spray it onto the leaves, which then absorb it far faster than the roots. You tend to only use foliar feed on plants that are really poorly that you need to give a quick boost and fix to. So if, for example, you had rose, the black spot, you might give it a feed to try and overcome some of those problems. House plants are also another good specimen where foliar feed is really useful. You can actually make your own foliar feed using comfrey tea and if you've not already seen my video on that, make sure you check it out. Make sure you dilute it 1 to 40. You want it really weak, give it a spray and that'll help boost the plant. If you've got gardening questions that you need answers for, well why not head over to the Garden Ninja Forum on my blog where you can ask me anything about gardens, plants and garden design. There's a whole army of other garden ninjas there that can help provide answers to your questions and it's a really great way to meet the other ninjas. So head over there now. So there we have it. Everything you need to know about plant feeds so you can make an informed decision. As I said at the beginning of the video, I always find that organic plant feeds that are homemade if possible are far better than any of the shop bought versions. However, it depends on space and how urgent you need to feed your plants. If you've liked this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are hundreds of garden design, hints, tips and hacks to make your gardens look awesome and your plants look healthy. I've been Lee Burkill, a garden ninja. Happy gardening.